So the heads and the platters, I put those together because most of the time that's what happens. They get together. And when that happens, that's where the bad news comes from. And then the 1% is your motor. And that's really bad news. So here's my, here's my rules when I'm training one of my guys and trying to get them up to par. I've got eight guys that are trained to do recoveries, and they take systems apart, blah, 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 and so on. Uh, the first thing is not to be emotionally attached. So if it's your hard drive, sometimes you're going to be a little more emotional than you need to be. And the truth of the matter is you do not need your porn back this week. You can live one more week without your porn. So you need to be... A little, a little removed from that, and go get new porn from someplace else. Uh, damaged hard drives do not do the same thing twice. And I quite literally mean that exactly the way that says it. That one day you'll plug it in, and a damaged hard drive will work. The next day you plug it in, and it doesn't. And it goes back and forth. But I, like I said, you, you have a limited number of times that when you plug a hard drive in to do a recovery, that you may actually be able to get that data back. So try to be prepared the very first time you plug it in, have lots of free space available. And when I mean free space, I mean that's, that's, that's a real key down here on this free space is your friend. Because if you have to do an image and you get lucky enough that maybe your OS mounted it, you might need to do two or three things at the same time and try to limit the amount that you're going to lose. If you plug in a hard drive and you're on a Windows system and the OS mounts it, you need to know exactly what files that you need first. So if your grandma gave you this and she said, uh, I need QuickBooks back, then you just skip everything else and you go straight to the QuickBooks folder and you don't do anything. Don't try to do two copies at once. Don't say, I got my pictures of Jimmy over here in my documents folder and I'm going to copy those out too. You wait for each process to stop and finish before you go and get the next copy. And you do it systematically in order, one, two, three, in the order of importance. Don't go getting OS files and things like that. And that's kind of the bad thing about some of the recovery programs is that they don't ask you about what files you're looking for. Most of the time they'll go and say, I'm going to scan your whole hard drive. And that includes your OS and all your program files. And 99% of the stuff that you're looking for is going to be in the My Documents folder on a Windows system. On a Mac system, you're always going for the user folder. The rest of the stuff is just crap. You can, you can restore that stuff or get it from some other place. The only, the only difference there is that you also need to know things like about Intuit software. Sometimes Intuit actually puts their stuff in the program files directory or in another directory someplace else. So if somebody says, I got Quick and QuickBooks, TAC, TurboTAC, any of that kind of stuff, you go after those things in those other folders first before you move on. Uh, persistence kind of goes with this whole thing with uh, damaged hard drives don't do the same thing twice because just as an example, like, I worked on a hard drive all week one week, couldn't get it to mount, and I knew that the platter wasn't damaged, so I kind of persisted for about a week with a drive before I go on to looking for parts and things like that. But uh, I plug it in on a Friday, I was just kind of sick of it, and I went home, I came home, I came back on Monday, and it was mounted and running, and it was working fine. So I was able to get the recovery done and then move the drive off and do whatever. But most people aren't going to try to use that drive again after it's damaged, so you're just going to throw it away after you're done. Don't try to keep it going for another week or something. Uh, heat is not your friend. And some of you probably read this tech document, the Tech Republic document that says like 200 ways to recover. You guys read that? Anybody here? There's a, there's, a, there's a thing that says 200 ways to recover your hard drive, and they basically give you like three sections. One of them says freeze your hard drive. That's number one. Number two is like hit your hard drive with a hammer or something like that. And it's, it's some pretty bad some pretty bad news. It's some pretty bad advice in some cases. Freezing your hard drive, if you do that, most of the time what you're going to do is get condensation on your platters, water is going to get inside the board, and as soon as the temperature reaches more than 70 degrees, going from zero to 70 or something, it's going to, it's going to cause this condensation, it's going to cause the drive to fail. But cooling the drive is a really good idea. It's really a smart idea to try to keep it as cold as possible while it's running, and typically it wants to be in the 70 degree range, but most of our drives are running at about 120 degrees. Most of you don't realize that, especially like Macs, they seem to get a little bit hotter where the, where the drive is in, in their laptops than any place else. So if you're doing any kind of monitoring and stuff like that, you'll see them running at like 117, 123 degrees. That, and that's some pretty bad news too, because metal expands glass. Glass doesn't expand as much. So when you've got somebody who's using like a IBM hard drive and the platters are made of ceramic material, there's ceramic and glass, they're kind of used universally as far as the, the way that they're talked about, but they do not expand as much, so typically you'll have a little bit better luck with heat with those drives. But 
they, the side effect of that is, is that because they're glass, that if the head does hit the hard drive, it hit the platter, it is going to scratch it, and you will see pixie dust going all over the place. Uh, and everybody on eBay is your friend. You will have to call them, contact them, email them. When you're looking for a particular drive, when you go to eBay and you pull up a drive and somebody's got like three drives laid out and say for sale, that could have been somebody else's picture. They just pasted it into their stuff. So when, you're, when you order that drive, you're going to be really disappointed when you see it's not the same serial number and it's not the same thing. So you need to let these people know when you're looking for a particular drive, the model and the date. Most of them will tell you up front. They'll tell you for free. They'll email you or whatever. They know you're looking for a particular drive. But if you get some of these guys who know you're looking to do a data recovery, they jack that price up. So now it becomes like $100 extra to go and look for this drive that you need to find. But if you're looking for a rare one, and that's the other thing is too, is that sometimes one week you might not find it on eBay, but next week you will. So, you know, if you're not emotionally attached to it and you put it aside and you wait a week, you might actually get it next week. And that works out pretty well. As, uh, it's, it's a good method to go through. You just need to kind of wait and be cautious. So you want to try everything before you open this case. So if you don't really have a clean environment, again, if you go to that to my website and you look at where you can make like a Tupperware thing, I've got a link to actually tell you how to make a clean room of your own where you can disassemble that drive and you're in good shape. Most of the time, you'll actually be okay just in a clean spot just to get that drive running. Because how many of you are going to open up your drive and then you're going to keep using it after you've opened it? Yeah, but after that, you're not going to like plug it in and you know put all your new porn on it on your you know for the next six months, are you? Yeah, it's it's pretty tough. After you open it and you expose it to the environment, there's a much better chance it's going to die later on. But you've already had a problem with it, so. Hard drives are cheap by comparison. I mean, if, it's, if, if the data that's on there is small, it's pretty easy to get something cheap, even memory sticks and things like that, just to get by. But you don't want to keep using a hard drive that's even partially or possibly damaged for any permanent stuff. You could probably keep your, like, your OS running on it and keep another data drive going, but you don't, you don't want to do that. Um, you want to look at your logic board carefully. I'm going to show you in a minute what happens to the logic board and how you can actually tell if there's something wrong with the board on the bottom. Um, and different connectors do different stuff. And this is really true. If you use a firewire on a drive, sometimes it won't mount, but then you can plug it into a USB. Sometimes it will mount. And also the other thing is too is that an IDE controller that's on the board, like on your motherboard, or if you get a separate IDE controller and plug it in, it has better air error handling. So you have a lot better chance of using an imaging application and doing something like DD Rescue to read each sector on the drive and getting that data back, because it will constantly retry if the software tells it to. And that's exactly what DD Rescue does and things like that. And there's some others like, uh, there's a free one that's called uh, FTK Imager for Windows. So if you're not, you know, because DD Rescue is not going to run on your Windows box. So if you want to try a really quick one and you have a Windows box, it doesn't matter if the hard drive mounts. A lot of times if you go into Device Manager and you look at the devices, if it tells you under your hard drives the correct model number of your drive, it doesn't matter if it mounted and you can go into your disk view and see the, you know, the whole layout and all of your partitions. So don't think that that's the big deal. Uh, it doesn't have to show any partitions at all. That's actually, again, just a software view of what's actually happening on your system, and it doesn't know. So if it shows up in Device Manager under hard drives, the hard thing there is looking for that model number to make sure, like for instance, Western Digital drives, when the board's fried and you plug it in, it'll say it's a two terabyte drive. I don't know why it says it's a two terabyte drive, but the firmware will instantly fry, say, two terabytes, and that's what it'll do. So that's a good indication that the logic board is bad. And that happens with some of the others, but...